let me uh, let me talk with you a little bit about the Christmas prayers. Not prayers, but prayers. P R A Y dash E R S. Uh, prayers. Uh, and in doing so, I'm going to talk with you about the Christ the Christmas prayers as well, uh, because there are there are several. Um, for want of a better word, classic prayers that take place in the Bible uh, narration of Christmas. And uh, they are significant prayers. As a matter of fact, so significant that all of them have been given a Latin name. Uh, churches that uh, have long been in, uh, in effect have, have named these uh, prayers that are in the Bible. With uh, with Latin Latin uh, names and uh, the the first one is not really a Christmas prayer. It's the prayer that uh, that I used this past Sunday in in uh, the message that I preached, Revelation twenty two twenty. Uh, Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, uh, Lord Jesus. And of course, uh, uh, that uh, prayer is spoken by all of God's people. And so, the name for that prayer is the Advent prayer. The arrival prayer, the coming uh, prayer, uh, that uh, John, John uh, the apostle, was the one who prayed that prayer. But really, all of the saints of all time have prayed that prayer of longing. So that's not one of the prayers we're considering today. We're going to begin. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the Latin name, and then tell me if you uh, know uh, what that means, and uh, maybe who prayed that, who that prayer uh, was. Okay, the name is. Terra, T-E-R-R-A, Pax, P-A-X, the Terra Pax prayer. Peace on, Peace on earth. All right, sir, that's correct. And so we would think, okay, that Terra Pax prayer then is the one that the angels uh, prayed, but actually, uh, you, you know, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Uh, actually, that's going to be this coming Sunday's uh Message, not that, uh, not that prayer, but the peace message, because Sunday is the peace Sunday in our four Sundays of Christmas. Uh, so, but uh, the Terra Pax prayer is actually found in Isaiah chapter nine. So it's the prayer of of Isaiah, and uh, you'll see when we read that why that's called the Terra Pax prayer, peace on earth. Uh, that's Isaiah chapter nine, beginning with verse uh, verse one. And, of course, Isaiah, we're talking six centuries before Christ. Uh, and so this is not uh, at the time that Jesus was born. This is way before that time, but beginning with verse 1. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed, as when at first he, that is God, the Lord God, highly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, in the in Galilee of the Gentiles. Interesting that uh, here Isaiah, six centuries before Christ, is talking about where Jesus had so much of his ministry in Galilee of the Gentiles. And then he begins with verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you. My new King James uh, capitalizes all of the uh, names for God and all the pronouns for God. And so they rejoice before you is capitalized in the new King James. That sort of helps me to remember that Isaiah is talking about the Lord God. Let's go back over that. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. As men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of the oppressor as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and for the fuel of fire. You know, this is like uh, turning one's uh, swords into plowshares and so forth. And then verse 6, For unto us a child, again that's a, that's a capital C in my Bible, is born. Unto us a son, capital S, is given. And the government will be upon capital H, his shoulder. And capital H, his name will be called Wonderful.
Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So that's the reason that's called the Terror of Pax prayer because Isaiah is praying uh, this prayer, giving thanks that a child is to be born and a son is to be given. Isn't it interesting, those words? I know you've heard Christmas sermons through the years and, and know that, uh, that Isaiah was very wise in using those words, a child being born and a son being given. Uh, the Son of God was not born uh, in Bethlehem. The Son of God was given in Bethlehem. But a child was born in uh, Bethlehem, the child being the incarnate Christ, the uh, the, the Lord Jesus himself born in Bethlehem and the son uh, was given and then the description of him is the government will be upon his shoulder his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God Everlasting Father Prince of Peace I'm going to come back to that prayer uh, during these Wednesday uh, 11 o'clock times and just uh, consider that as a, a, a study uh, but I'm just giving you those uh, prayers today, and that would be Isaiah. All right, the second one is this. And, and sorry just to be uh, listing that, but that's what I'm doing today to introduce these. And so, so that's the Terrapax prayer, Isaiah chapter 9. The second one is the Benedictus, B-E-N-E-D-I-C-T-U-S, Benedictus prayer. <coughs> Benedictus, are, obviously that's kind of a benediction uh, that that prayer is called. Anybody kind of think of who that might be? You got it right about Isaiah, uh, the Terra Pax prayer. What's the Benedictus prayer? The man is Zacharias. Zacharias. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Uh, does anybody immediately think of who Zacharias is? Just say, say it out loud. Yes. He was... Uh... He was John the Baptist's father. That's right. He was John the Baptist's what? Father. Father. That's correct. Uh, the, the father of John the Baptist was Zacharias. He uh, was a, a priest, and he was working in the priesthood when an angel appeared to him. And as I said, we'll come back and look at that prayer again in, uh, in December. But it's at, beginning in verse 67 of Luke chapter 1. It's the prayer of, uh, of Zachar Zacharias. And uh, the Bible says now, his father, that is John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied, saying, Oh, good. I, I thought that was my phone doing something. I'm glad it's yours. That's all right. That's okay. Uh, yeah. I don't usually get my call. Here. No, not during prayer meeting. I'm sure <laughs> that, that doesn't usually happen. That's good. You get that turned off. Mm -hmm. Good. I, I think I've mentioned to you all, I have a friend of mine who was conducting the Lord's Supper once, and uh, a lady's phone went off during the Lord's Supper, and she had a particular ring. It wasn't just a little nice chime like uh, Judy has there, and it said, Mama, Mama, pick up the phone. And I said, <laughs> So uh, 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 that, uh, the preacher told me, he said, I just had to break up after that. We couldn't keep on uh, being serious in, in, in the service. So, so thank you for not having that on your phone. Dude. All right, beginning with verse 67. Now, the, now uh, John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied, saying, here's his prayer. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us, in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of those who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath of which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, he's talking about his son, John, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring, I love that uh, Jesus being called the day spring from on high, has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and, and the shadow of death 
to guide our feet into the way of peace. That's the prayer that Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, prayed uh, at the time that uh, John the Baptist was born. And we'll, we'll talk about that story again. I just wanted to introduce you to the Benedictus prayer, the prayer of uh, Zacharias, which is, Blessed be the Lord who has visited us. <coughs> the, the third prayer, y'all will get this one, <coughs> the Magnificat. Mm -hmm. Magnificat. That's the prayer. Yes, that's the prayer of Mary found also in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 uh, and, and following. Uh, if uh, the Benedictus was a prayer at the birth of Jesus, the Magnificat is a prayer of Mary when she realized what was going to happen, that she was going to give birth uh, to the very Son of God. And I love how she starts. My that's beginning with verse 46. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Can you kind of think about that a little bit? We'll come back to Mary's prayer, but here she's bewildered by this announcement that she is pregnant with the very Son of God. The Spirit of God has come into her womb and has uh, uh, conceived uh, the Lord Jesus, and uh, how can a teenage girl just take that in, you know, and yet... Her first words are, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Indeed, they would. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant. He has helped his servant Israel and in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever. And then uh, the Bible says that concludes Mary's prayer. What a, what a magnificent prayer of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord. And that's the point of her, her prayer. Now we've already mentioned the next uh, prayer. And that's called in Latin, Glory in Excelsis. G-L-O-R-I. I-N-E-X-C-E-L-S-I-S. -E -E and that's in Luke chapter 2. So just over one page in my Bible. And that is the prayer of the angels. And of course, Glory in excelsis means what? Glory in the highest. 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 Glory in the highest. So uh, without reading all of that uh, passage about the shepherds and so forth, uh, starting with verse 13, it says, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, <laughs> praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So that is the glory in excelsis uh, prayer. And I look forward to us studying that one in more detail, uh, talking about the angels and who they are and uh, who they were at the birth of Jesus and how, how their activity increased when, uh, when, when Jesus was born. And uh, that's the prayer of what? It's a prayer of adoration, glory in the highest. Uh, they are giving praise and glory to God. And... Uh, those good angels, I will go ahead and give you a little hint. Always give praise to God. That's all they that's all they are given an ability to do now. They can't choose uh, to praise God. They uh, they had those angels that left their first estate, which was in praise of God, and they became demons on, on the earth, and they can they cannot praise God. They cannot they they no longer have the ability to praise God. But the angels in heaven now are, that's their new estate, and they constantly praise the Lord. They do other things too, and they watch over us and so forth. But uh, they are they are giving uh, praise to God. So that's that adoration prayer, glory in excelsis. All right, there's two more prayers. The next one is called Eke Vinio. Eke Vinio. Anybody know what that means? Well, Eke is man, isn't it? That's right. But I that's don't right. know what the other word. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it, it actually is, uh, the, the, the idea of that prayer is 
Behold, I come. It's talking about uh, the Eke. In this case, actually, uh, it is talking about the word uh, uh, behold and then venio, I come. Do, does anybody remember? Uh, hey, this could be called the Christmas Eve prayer. A mm -hmm. prayer prayed in heaven before Christ was incarnated and born in the, in, in the flesh. Hebrews chapter 10. Give on the reference for that. That's actually a prayer of the Son of God in heaven just prior to becoming a baby, so to speak, on earth. Uh, it's, the, uh, it's the Behold, I Come uh, prayer. And uh, let's, let's read that prayer of, of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10. Therefore, when he came into the world, when Christ was incarnated as a baby, he said to the Father in heaven, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. But then I said, Behold, I have come. Eke vinio. Behold, I have come. And in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. Uh, when we come to that prayer during uh, December, we'll, we'll talk about the uh, very poignant relationship between the Father and the Son. And, you know, it's, it's, the Trinity is something that none of us would say that we can understand uh, completely. I, I certainly don't say that I can understand it completely, but we know that God is one, and yet we experience Him as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So there is a there is a Godhead that has been since before time in eternity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit preexisted before God the Son became flesh and dwelt among us pre-existed before the Holy Spirit was manifest and fell upon the apostles and then falls upon all of us who, who believe in, in Jesus. The, uh, the Godhead pre-existed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And here is, you know, the, the Bible is, uses things that are mysterious to us and beyond us to at least give us uh, concepts. And so here's the concept of the Son speaking to the Father before he was born in, in Bethlehem. And he said, you, you have prepared a body for me. You don't desire sacrifice and offering like you do us yielding to you. So this is the, this is the submission prayer of the Son to the Father, so to speak, on Christmas Eve. Okay, we, you know, we're just using human terms there. But just before uh, Christ uh, was born. Now, you know, you could get into a question of how... How is that time happening in heaven and here in earth? Mary has conceived the baby and she's bearing it. I don't know that. <laughs> I, I, I can't tell you uh, comparing eternity, which is not in time, and here on earth, which is in time. But I'm using that human expression, the prayer of Jesus on Christmas Eve, knowing that you can't just pin that down to say that's the very hour uh, that it happened. But that's the time prior to his becoming uh, incarnate in the flesh, there is this this submission prayer that he prays to the Father. This Eke Vino. So we've got we've had we've had five prayers that are Christmas prayers. The Advent prayer, that's uh, Zacharias. Uh, I mean that's all of us uh, praying together. So that that's actually the kind of the introduction. The first one, the Terapax uh, prayer, Isaiah chapter nine. The Benedictus prayer, Zacharias, Luke one. The Magnificat prayer, Mary, Luke 1 also. The Glory in Excelsis prayer, the angels. The Echevinio prayer, uh, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus. Quote, on Christmas Eve, praying, Behold, I come. Total submission. Now, those are all prior to Christmas, so to speak. Prior to the incarnation. There's one more Christmas prayer after the in incarnation. And it's called the Nuke. N U N C, Dimitis, D I M I T T I S. Those are the two, two Latin words. Nunc Dimitis. Anybody know who that pray, prayer was? 
senior adult, right after Jesus was born, days after Jesus was born. Simeon is his name. Luke chapter 2, verse uh, 29. Luke chapter 2, verse 29. And nuke dimitis means, now let me depart. Nuke, that's a Latin word for now. Dimitis, I depart. Now let me uh, depart. And that's, uh, that's the prayer that Simeon prayed. Luke chapter 2, in verse uh, 20, 29. Well, let's start with verse 24, 25 about that because you kind of need to get the, the gist of, of that this uh, final prayer. Now, behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This, name was, this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. That means Israel being restored. And the Holy Spirit was on him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that's the second mention of the Holy Spirit about Simeon. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came, here's the Spirit again, by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus for to do to him according to the custom of the law, he took Jesus up in his arms and he blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all the people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel. Uh, this is Simeon. The Bible says that uh, Simeon and uh, a woman named Anna also uh, were present at the time that Mary and Joseph brought Jesus. Uh, to the temple to be dedicated. Uh, that it was usually something that happened eight days after the uh, birth of a son. And so as they brought him in there, Simeon recognized who that, uh, that baby was. I remember hearing somebody talk about a lady in their church, a senior adult lady in the church, during the time of about the 60s when hippies began getting saved and coming into churches. A lot of times with the long hair down on their shoulders and other signs, earrings, and things like that that they uh, were bringing with them. But they were getting saved and getting baptized. And uh, a lot of these young people were coming into the church. And there was an elderly lady who, uh, this woman who's writing her devotion about it, said that she saw all this happening, all, all these uh, other things. And somebody talked to her one day and said, you know, what do you think about all these young people that are coming into the church now. And she said, you know, I'm just glad that I've had the opportunity to hold the baby. You know what she was saying? I've had the opportunity to see these young people coming into faith and coming to know Christ and following in baptism and becoming a part of the church. And she was referring to this story here where Simeon held the baby. He he saw something that was out ahead. He, he saw what was coming. He saw that this was not just a little baby that had been born to some poor people. How do we know there were poor people? They didn't bring the sacrifice uh, at the time of the dedication that wealthier people did. They brought two doves instead of uh, a meat uh, sacrifice indicating that they were in, in uh, poverty. But they were coming, doing that, and uh, he recognized that this wasn't just a young mom and perhaps an older uh, dad and there were poor people coming, dedicating a baby. This was the very son of God. He, he recognized he's, he's held the baby and he says, now I can depart in peace. Lord, uh, I, I've seen Christ. I've seen him in, in this baby and you can let me die happy now uh, because I, I've seen that. Nuke Demetrius prayer prayed by Simeon. I call it the prayer of satisfaction. So the first prayer is a prayer of anticipation. That's uh, Isaiah. The second prayer is a prayer of fulfillment, Zacharias. The third prayer is a prayer of praise, Mary. The fourth prayer is a prayer of adoration, the angel. The fifth prayer is a prayer of total submission, Christ, the Son of God in heaven. And this last prayer is a prayer of satisfaction, the prayer of, of Simeon. Lord, uh, now I can... I can depart in, in peace. And, uh, you know, I, I would say this this morning, y'all. Any of these prayers would be good for us to pray in our 
on words anytime during the uh, Christmas season. The prayer of anticipation, look what's coming. The prayer of fulfillment, look at the herald that has uh, come ahead of Jesus. The prayer of praise, like Mary, uh, my soul magnifies the Lord. The prayer of adoration, like the angels in heaven. Uh, the prayer of total submission, like the Son of God in heaven. And the prayer of satisfaction, a senior adult. Now I can go and and uh, and be with you, Lord. So, uh, I, by the way, I call Simeon uh, one of the other three wise men. The three wise men that I, I like to read about a lot are not the, and of course we don't even know there were three of them that came uh, later after the birth of Jesus and brought their gifts. We, we identify them as three because they had three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but the Bible doesn't say the number of those wise men. But the other three wise men that I talk about are Joseph. What, what do we remember Joseph said in the Bible? Nothing. There is not one recorded <laughs> word of Joseph in the Bible. He, he, uh, does not, he does not speak. There are no words of Joseph. We, we, we know that he did speak to the angel and uh, you know, was bewildered about the announcement, but uh, words are not recorded in the scripture of Joseph. He was silent Sam, uh, so to speak. And then also Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, and Simeon, uh, this uh, man who was ready to, uh, ready to go. Uh, because he had seen uh, the Lord's Christ. So I call those the other three wise men, Zacharias and Joseph and Simeon, and two of them in this uh, study tonight. So, today. So, uh, that's just kind of an introduction to the next few Wednesdays when we're going to be talking uh, in more detail about these prayers, beginning with the Isaiah chapter 9 uh, prayer. And uh, then, uh, just, uh, I believe this will be a, a helpful study for us. The seven prayers uh, of Christmas, including that Advent prayer, uh, John the Apostle praying, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Any comments about those uh, prayers before we conclude uh, today, those seven prayers? We'll, we'll cover them again, okay? Uh, so that was just kind of a quick overview of uh, the seven prayers of Jesus. We won't go back to visit uh, Revelation 22 20 since we did that Sunday, but we will go back over these others over the next Wednesday. Okay? You know, Brother Mike, I think we all leave here learning something new from what you when you were preaching. I hope so. We, that, we that, do. That, that's, we, sometimes we scratch our head. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time we learn something re really interesting. Well, thank you. Thank you for that word. I think, I think Brother Mike, it's always since I've known everything has been where well, thank you. Thank you. That's certainly one of my goals. You don't have any doubt what you're saying. Thank you. That's certainly one of my, my goals for, for absolute sure that we would comprehend and understand. Thank you for those words. Father, we are grateful to you that we can join the Christmas prayers in praying at this season. Lord, as December begins tomorrow, and uh, we've already seen so many signs and heard so many sounds and uh, depicted so many scenes of uh, the birth of Jesus. It's just a wonderfully exciting time of the year for us. But I pray it's also going to be a time where we will, uh, we will be like these prayers and our prayers will be significant during this season that we won't get so caught up in the activities and the hurry and all of that of this season that we are not uh, uh, really getting intimate with you in prayer. Uh, may, may it happen. And may the study of these, uh, these prayers be helpful to us and be enriching and deepening to us in our prayer life. Thank you for the privilege we have to meet together in person and on the phone today. And thank you for allowing us to open your word and study it. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thanks for being here today. Thanks for coming.